Hello and welcome everyone to the talk on learning to learn by gradient descent by gradient descent presented by Stanford Scholar Initiative. Let's discuss the problem. The gradient descent method can be considered the starting point for many optimization methods. Many of the problems are related to the update rules between two consecutive steps. When rules are changed to fit specific classes of problems, there is a danger of potentially poor performance outside its scope. But specialization to subclass of problems is in fact a way to achieve high performance in general. Many ML algorithms are based on gradient descent using the first derivative of a cost function but at the cost of losing the details provided by higher orders of derivatives. So what's the difficulty behind achieving this? Designing is a major issue. The number of parameters to calculate is simply enormous. The cost in number of parameters and operations of 1% more precision grows in such a way that it can become unsustainable. So let's dive in to see what the authors talk about. Most machine learning tasks can be seen as an optimization of objective function. If this function can approach the issue using some form of gradient descent, we get a sequence of updates. Often the rules for these updates are customized to individual problem domain. In this paper, the authors consider a different approach, that is designing an optimization algorithm which can be input as a learning problem and which allows the algorithm to learn the problem of interest in an automatic way. Let's see what the authors came up with. Authors transition from hand-designed features to learned features in machine learning. This approach enables us to train optimizers that are specialized to particular classes of functions without direct domain knowledge of the problem. The authors propose the following idea. The optimizer, left side, receives information from the optimizee on the right side, which in turn sends back updates and improves further. Others wrote the final optimizee parameters as a function of the optimizer parameters, taking the update steps to be the output of a recurrent neural network. While the objective function depends only on the last parameter value for training the optimizer, it is convenient to have an objective that depends on the entire trajectory of optimization. So did the others do well? Others use a very small network looking at a single coordinate to define the optimizer and sharing it across different parameters of the optimizee. The updating rule is implemented using a two-layer LSTM network. The input of this mini-network are the optimizee gradient and the previous hidden state. The output is the update for the corresponding optimizee parameter. Others propose to pre-process the inputs of the optimizer using a formula, improving the results in comparison to rescaling by choosing an appropriate constant. Communication between coordinates works based on global averaging cells. In each LSTM layer, a subset is designed with their activations averaged at each step across all coordinates. NTM BFGS optimizer allows low rank updates and the controller operates coordinate wise. Now let's evaluate the paper. The authors use synthetic matrices of size 10 by 10 from random numbers drawn from a Gaussian distribution and a quadratic function which has to be minimized. The learned algorithm represented by solid lines performs better as shown. Authors test whether trainable optimizers can learn to optimize a small neural network on MNIST and how they can generalize functions beyond those that they were trained on. The left graph shows better performance for learned optimizers with the base network, whereas the right side shows the same results even if it's run over 200 steps. Robust behavior is seen changing hidden units or layers. However, changing the activation function inhibits generalization of learned optimizer to different architectures. 
With the term neural art, authors try to explain the transfer of an artistic style to an image using convolutional networks. Each style of image leads to a different optimization problem. The LSTM optimizer outperforms all standard optimizers if the resolution and the style image are the same as the ones on which it was trained on. Moreover, it continues to perform very well when both the resolution and the style are changed at test time. In this summary lies the most outstanding points that we observe throughout the evaluation of the method proposed by the authors. With that, we come to the end of this presentation. If you would like to view more of our talks, visit scholar.stanford.edu. Thank you.